Station Houston, are you ready for the event? Yes, we are ready for the event. Switching to the mic. NASA PAO, Mission Control Houston, please call station for a voice check. Station, this is NASA PAO. How do you read me? Hey, I've got you loud and clear. How me? Sounds great. Good morning, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us today for the news conference with astronaut Kate Rubens and cosmonauts Sergei Kuzferchkov and Commander Sergei Ryzhikov. Tomorrow marks 20 years since the launch of Expedition 1, and Monday, November 2nd, will mark 20 years that astronauts have lived and worked continuously on the space station to test technologies, conduct scientific research, and develop skills needed to explore farther from Earth. If you are a member of the media joining us today, please raise your hand by pressing star 1 to ask a question or star 2 to withdraw it. Kate, Sergey, and Sergey, I'll hand it over to you if there's anything you'd like to add before we get started with questions today. Yeah, thanks very much. It's an incredible honor for us to be able to be up here on the 20th anniversary of the uh, first manned presence in space on the, on the space station and this continuous human presence for, for 20 years. So we happen to have picked a really good expedition to be up here, and I think we all feel uh, very lucky. And I'll pass it to my crewmates in case they want to say a word or two. Yes, we are very happy. Uh, to be on station in this great event and uh, we hope all of our uh, international team join us and happy to be with us. Yeah, we are honored to be here on board the station when we celebrate 20 years of uh, human uh, you know, habitable uh, period of ISS, and we continue our programs, we continue space exploration, and we hope we'll still be uh, here in space, in, on board the International Space Station, all together, all the partners. Thanks very much, and over to you, Houston. Thank you all. So we'll now head into questions. So again, please press star one if you have a question and star two to withdraw it. Please direct your question to a specific crew member. And if you have a question for Sergei Ryzhikov, please direct it to Sergei one. If you have a question for Sergei Kuzferchkov, please direct it to Sergei two. We'll start off with Robert Perlman from Collect Space. Hi, Kate, Sergey, and Sergey. Uh, this question's for Kate and Sergey. One, um, thinking about the past 20 years, suppose the Smithsonian were to call up there and ask you to identify an object or two that could be used to represent the past two decades of continuous human occupancy aboard the ISS. What would you pick? Hey, Robert, thanks. That's actually a great question. I think the object that I would pick uh, would be a wire tie. Uh, so we use these wire ties on EVA. Uh, they're a pretty simple object, but they absolutely do the trick. Um, they're, they're really uh, one of the workhorses of, of EVA, and it's a very simple thing that you wouldn't think is so important, uh, and yet it's absolutely incredible when we're doing uh, spacewalks. Uh, it represents all of the kinds of things that, that we can do, and to me it really represents uh, spacewalking. Uh, I guess um, all station and all program is a very significant object. And um, uh, on the one hand, uh, we have everything what we need, but on the other hand, I uh, wish to ask, uh, for example, more, more 
Velcros, <laughs> more gray tapes, so any fixing elements, because it's very important here. Thank you, and next up is James Rogers with Fox News. Hello, good morning. Uh, I have a question for Kate. Um, Kate, I know that you recently voted on the ISS. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that process? Um, and also, you know, how straightforward was it? And what did you use at the voting booth? Yeah, that's a great question. So it's actually pretty similar to the process of like voting uh, by absentee ballot from home. If you're, uh, for example, a military member serving overseas, if you're a government civil servant, we have a process in place so that people that are serving overseas that are American citizens can still vote. And so we fill out, it's called a, a federal postcard uh, application uh, for voting overseas. And I don't know that I'm technically overseas. We're we are far away from the United States at times, depending on our orbit. So we fill out this application. Um, we actually get the ballot is encrypted to us. Um, we send it back down to our county clerk, and they record the vote. And it's really, this is, a, a, this is an honor for us. We also think of it as a duty. It's a privilege, um, but I think it's also our obligation as citizens. And so we're, we're, we feel very lucky to be able to vote from space. Uh, as the voting booth, I used my crew quarters. And so that's, that's what's in the photo. Uh, it's our small little area where we sleep and have our computer. Uh, it's a private area on the space station. And it seemed like it would be about the right size for a voting booth uh, back down at home. The next question is from Marsha Dunn of the Associated Press. Yes, hi. Um, uh, probably for Kate and, and uh, one of the two Sergeys, if they'd like to um, chime in. How do you plan to mark the big milestone on Monday with uh, 20 years of continuous habitation? Um, uh, are you going to raise a toast? Or are you going to maybe uh, chat with the first expedition crew? Or just, just what do you plan? Thank you. Hi, Marcia. It's great to talk to you. Thanks for the really good question. Yeah, I think we're going to probably just have a simple dinner celebration up here on the ISS. Uh, we really enjoy, as crew members, getting together uh, and, and having dinner. Um, we're going to do some uh, public affairs events like, like this one to let folks know uh, about the 20th anniversary of continuous human presence on the International Space Station. And I think the most fitting tribute uh, is for the three of us to just go take a nice long view out the cupola, look at the beautiful Earth, and appreciate this amazing space station. And uh, I think it's a good idea to call uh, first crew members, uh, present them, and um, maybe send them some pictures uh, for example, today we found a uh, uh, note from first crew uh, about installing of new uh, equipment on board. So I think um, remembering of it would, would, would be a pleasure for, you, for them. Yeah, yeah the, the celebration day will be a Monday, so probably we'll be celebrating this day by hard work, <laughs> continuing working hard, and uh, of course, remembering those who uh, flew here, who've been flying here for uh, 20 years, and uh, all that 63 expeditions that were here before and we really appreciate their income in this big program. Uh, of course, we'll be remember, uh, we will remember all the participants of this huge program. Thank you so much, you all. Next question is from Bill Harwood of CBS News. Yeah, hi. Um First, for Kate, um, you know, 20 years, some of the modules up there have, are even older than 20 years. And so my question to you is, how is the station holding up in the context of, you know, NASA's plans to operate it, you know, maybe through the end of the decade? 
And for either Sergey, can can you guys give us an update on the leak? I mean, I'm thinking also of that in terms of the age of the station. You know, I don't know what caused it, but how is how is your treatment of that leak back in Zvezda going? Thank you. Hi, Bill. It's great to talk to you again from ISS. And uh, in terms of the modules up here, I flew in 2016, uh, and I actually had to call down to some of my friends and say, I can't believe this place hasn't changed at all. So it's looking very good. Um, we've got, you can see all around us, we've got a ton of scientific equipment. Uh, but in terms of the actual structure and the hardware, uh, the station certified through 2024. Uh, NASA has certified most of the hardware through 2028. And so we do expect that it, this is going to be with us for a long time and it's going to be producing uh, incredible science and incredible results for years to come. And I will let uh, the Sergei speak to the Pear Ka leak investigation. Yeah, I agree with Kate. The station is very, uh, has a very good condition. And um, uh, we are thankful, uh, all designers from Sergei Korolev, uh, still uh, now, uh, because it's very reliable construction. And um, anyway, it's it has uh, leaking, very small leaking every day, and uh, now it's a little bit more than standard. And so we are working to find it finally and of course replace. So don't worry. The next question is from Mark Corot of Aviation Week. Thank you. My question's for uh, Kate Rubens. As a, as a scientist, how would you rate the quality of the laboratory capability of the International Space Station uh, with, you know, the highest end, uh, most modern laboratory on the earth and does it have like the last question some staying power thank you that's an incredible question and uh... in terms of laboratory capability it's actually really phenomenal up here i think early on in the program we were working on just getting the station assembled and built and now we're getting it completely outfitted uh, for scientific experiments. So, for example, there's a there's a confocal microscope right to my left uh, that just got installed. Uh, this was a, a Japanese uh, microscope. It's really top of the line. Uh, this is the kind of thing that we would use in the lab to study uh, cells, uh, study immune reaction. It's the kind of thing I would have had in my lab at MIT. Uh, we introduced the DNA sequencer in 2016. This is the same technology, again, that we would be using on Earth for really high throughput sequencing. Um, and it's not just biology here. That's the amazing thing about this laboratory. Uh, the space station and even this kind of small space has all of this biology equipment, but then it's also a material science laboratory. It's a physics laboratory. So we have a state-of-the-art cold atom lab uh, that was just installed in, in the lab two modules down. Uh, this is really incredible. And this morning uh, and a couple of days earlier, I was working on a, installing an experiment in the microgravity science glove box. It's a physics experiment. So this shows the kind of experiments that we can put in place um, that are really modular. We have the facilities, and then we put this experiment in there, and that experiment's looking at liquid surface interfaces and possibly improving applications for semiconductors. So it's a world-class laboratory, and it's an absolutely packed one. We have over 200 experiments per edition. Uh, I think it's, it's like taking an entire university campus, a world-class university, and shrinking it down to the size of the space station. Next up is Susie Nelson of Business Insider. Thank you so much. Um, so this question is for any of you all. Um, you mentioned that most of the station is hardware certified through 2028, but I know that in the last couple of months, the station has still seen a lot of maintenance issues and breakdowns, notably one of the oxygen supply systems and a toilet, and um, then obviously the leak. So I guess going forward, are there any issues that you're primarily concerned about or what are things you check more routinely to make sure that the station is in working condition? 
Yeah, thanks. You hear about uh, routine maintenance all the time, and you'll actually, if you follow station news, you'll hear about things breaking all the time. They're not really breaking. A lot of times it's service components that just reach the end of their life, and we have spare parts. We have a lot of, of spare parts stowed up here. We can send more in our cargo uh, resupply vehicles. And so uh, the toilet breaking... I don't worry about that. The toilet breaks all the time. We fix it. It's not a big issue. Uh, one of the reasons that it seems to, quote unquote, break all the time is we're actually really pushing the forefront of technology here. So our water recycling system is 90% uh, closed loop. So that means yesterday's coffee is today's coffee is tomorrow's coffee. We, we really do recycle everything up here. And so this is, this, this is really exciting technology. Um, as part of that, we're sort of testing what breaks down, what happens to this technology as we push it forward for human exploration. And so things are usually not uh, broken beyond repair. They're always something that we can work on and we can repair. And we have plenty of uh, spare parts up here. And so I think it's an incredibly reliable and a robust system. Uh, and, we, and we do enjoy doing maintenance on it. That's, that's a fun part of our day is, is getting to fix all these cool technologies. The next question is from Joey Roulette of Reuters. Hey, uh, this question is for everybody. Um, if there's one thing on the ISS or that the ISS could use as an upgrade, or I guess in this case a, a birthday present, what would that be? What would the, the present for the ISS be? <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, thank you for the question, and uh, I think uh, we we always have space uh, here for any ideas. We always have something to upgrade. Uh, space station is a high-level laboratory and uh, high-level uh, exploration f for post, and we always have something to upgrade and update. But uh, one of the most issues is that the volume of the station is really limited and uh, we obviously need space, more space, more modules and uh, probably that would be a great update for the station because we have high level equipment but sometimes we don't have space for that. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we had a little uh, discussion here before answering that question. I think all three of us are in agreement. We could use some more uh, stowage. So, so more modules. Uh, there are definitely plans for that. Uh, we're going to launch uh, pretty soon. Uh, the Russian segment's going to launch MLM. Uh, the U.S. has plans for commercial modules. Uh, and we welcome uh, any and all modules, particularly if they have some stowage space. Next up is Irene Klotz of Aviation Week. Hi, thanks very much. Um, uh, for Kate, uh, can you describe anything that you're doing to get ready for Crew One, um, sleep station setups, anything like that? And also for um, Sergey uh, uh, Rizikov, if you can give us an update on preparations for um, the MLN attachment next year. Thanks. Yeah, it's a it's a great time right now. We're really excited to welcome uh, Crew One, and uh, we haven't had five people on the USOS before. Uh, so the program has actually been working for a while to make sure um, that all the consumables we need are up here, that our life support systems uh, can support that. And part of our exploration technology has actually been adding to our life support system. So, for example, we have increased CO2 scrubbing capability. We're pushing our water regeneration system uh, to even higher levels of closed-loop water regeneration. Uh, and just for me, I'm, I'm getting ready for, for the new folks to come here. You've got to get all their stuff ready for them. I had to find their exercise equipment today, uh, and I was really excited while I was getting all of that out, uh, getting ready to greet some friends coming through the hatch. Yes, our crew, we are very lucky uh, to be on board at this time because we have many activities related to new models and uh, new uh, generation of uh, improvement of uh, ISS. 
and um, we are preparing right now for upcoming EVA and uh, it also has some tasks for future MLM module and um, uh, we have next EVA will completely um, devoted to uh, MLM, MLM docking and also we are lucky to uh, make a relocation of our vehicle uh, to provide uh, docking of MLM. We have a few social media questions today. This one is from Angie Smith and anyone is welcome to answer. What was going through your mind as the hatch was opening for you to join Expedition 63? Thank you for the question. Uh, yes, I think uh, my feelings were the same that uh, others, other crew members has had before. Uh, I was surprised how how easy is flying here in inside the station and uh, on on yeah it's it's. It's easy to fly, but it was difficult to control body motion. <laughs> yes, because uh, it's it's uh, completely uh, other feeling that the, the the feeling of motion on the Earth's surface, and the second feeling was uh, when Chris Cassidy uh, let me uh, let me see the the cupola the. The, the, the second feeling was how great is the view, how great is our planet, and how beautiful it is, uh, and that's it. And But most of my other thoughts were about work, about uh, incredible opportunities here on board the station. Thank you. Another question from social media, this one from Philippe. And maybe for Kate or Sergey, one, what is the most difficult job you have had on the station? I think uh, most difficult heart uh, we passed. Uh, most difficult heart is wait and uh, have preparation for flight. Now we are enjoying being here. And I'm enjoying working here and enjoying talk with you, for example, also. Thank you. Yeah, and for me, uh, for me, the um, the work inside here, uh, it, it feels great. Like it's all, it's like I'm just back here in 2016. Um, during Expedition 48 and 49, I think the most challenging thing we did were EVAs, spacewalks. Um, certainly you spend a lot of time preparing for those on the ground. Um, the three of us trained together to be able to do EVA and robotics. And uh, this, is, this is probably the foremost mental and physical challenge we have as astronauts to be outside in the vacuum of space. Uh, in a 400-pound spacesuit, uh, moving that mass around with very, very expensive equipment. Um, now, that being said, it's also one of the most fun things we do. So we're looking forward to many spacewalks, many EVAs on this increment. Uh, it's going to be a great expedition. Next up, we have a question from Susie Nelson with Business Insider. Hi. Thank you so much again for taking another question from me. Um, this is actually for either Sergey, um, one of the cosmonauts. So your fellow cosmonaut, uh, Genady Padalka, described the Russian segment of the ISS as exhausted, given its age. And it seems that there have been quite a few breakdowns in quick succession. So is that a trend to be concerned about? And in any case, what do you think the solution is, given the aging infrastructure of the space station? Uh, Геннадий Подалко назвал станцию российский сегмент изношенным. Как вы считаете, учитывая ряд отказов, которые происходили один за другим, справедливо ли это замечание? И если да, как можно решить эту проблему? Uh, 
Uh, I think it's a personal meaning of uh, very respectable uh, cosmonaut, but uh, I think uh, we have uh, pretty well uh, station hall and uh, particularly Russian segment, and uh, it's it possible to continue uh, using uh, Russian segment uh, as part as uh, ISS, and it's pretty re reliable uh, and has a good status because uh, we are uh, taking care about it and the uh, huge uh, ground team uh, also do this. Thank you. We have time for about one more question. This one again from Irene Klotz of Aviation Week. Maybe not. We'll go back to a social media question. So this one's from Jaden, who wants to know, what are you most looking forward to doing during your stay on the space station over the next six months? I'm always about the science and the experiments. And so there's a lot of great science that's coming up on this expedition. Uh, we're going to continue some of the work on growing cells in space. So we're looking at growing heart cells. Uh, and then also other various kinds of, of tissue. Microgravity allows us to have this flexibility uh, in, the, in the architecture uh, and in growing delicate structures. Uh, I'm looking forward to a lot of the microbial experiments up here. I really want to look at the station microbiome. It's been here for 20 years. Uh, the microbes are, are with us as well. And so uh, I'm very interested in finding out uh, who's here in terms of microbial populations, where they are, uh, how they're changing over time. And I'm sure uh, the Sergeys have some, some things that they're looking forward to as well. Uh, the, the most uh, exciting upcoming things are EVAs, of course. We are uh, well prepared for that, yeah, but we s we still getting ready for that. We have to prepare the uh, air our airlock, and uh, following weeks are dedicated to this. And of course, we have uh, science experiments on board, and uh, we hope all these uh, all the results will be really appreciated by ground scientists. We do everything for them. Well, thank you so much, Kate, Sergey, and Sergey. It was truly an honor to speak with you today. And thank you to everyone who joined us live as we celebrate the 20th anniversary of continuous human presence aboard the space station. Station, this is Houston ACR. That concludes our event as we count down to 20 continuous years of humans living and working on the International Space Station. Thank you to all participants. Station, we are now resuming operational audio communications.